Show me by raising your hands how many of you with us today have faced difficulties choosing an academic department after finishing high school. Okay, I see hands again, and that's good for my speech. I'm so sorry for you, though. Let us take a trip down memory lane and see that our society had been heavily working by the group-based system, leading every generation to lack individuality. It seems like it's hardly ever there. If we have any Game of Thrones fans today, maybe you would understand this better when I quote Ned telling his daughter something about wolves. Let me tell you something about wolves, child. When the snows fall and the white winds blow, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Here, we are the pack. We are going to survive. Or so we were taught. All of us are lured by relying on someone else's opinion to make a decision. We are comforted. There is a plan, a routine, everything is mapped out for us. Therefore, it leads us to reassurance. It is in our nature to prefer what's known over the unknown. The problem here lies within the pattern we have. Despite many of us who would use the word independent to describe ourselves, in fact, we are not. We are very dependent on those in our lives that we trust and love to make a decision and decide our lives. I am not arguing that this is false. It is not necessarily false, but it is limiting to our abilities, to our horizons, and most importantly, to our choices. This leads me to an important branch of this dilemma. To many, if not all of us in this room, deciding on a college branch can be a dreadful task, fluctuating between valid reasons why we should be confused and other additional ones that are forced onto us by society. Many societal norms about the superior status of some scientific fields are internalized. Therefore, many of us still fail to see them as a, as a problem. Maybe your friends, your family members, your school faculty, your teachers, all of them contribute to reinforcing them. Let's see some examples. 12 great teachers, science branch, they teach and prepare they, their students as they go to take their baccalaureate exams, the motto of work, study hard, enter medical school. That's it. Ignoring and underestimating every other area or field of interest they might have. Or see how many parents who seem only proud when their sons or daughters get accepted into those scientific fields. Not only this, but they refuse to even discuss their child's desire or dream, leading the child to become vulnerable, emotionally and mentally. They become simply unhappy without realizing the central issue of their unhappiness. As life progresses, many would blame it on workload or an argument habit between, between me and my coworker. It's a coping mechanism used to avoid the main problem because they know each day passes it becomes too late for them to restart their lives. I will take a step back, and you might argue with me, some of you might, that these scientific fields should be the standard for our youth and students, because the job is secured, therefore the payment is well, and you will be socially respected. There is a social status. And to that I say, yes, you are right. Or were you? This strategy has worked for 10 years or so, but we all know a smart guy who once stated a law, for every action in nature, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Thus, having this mindset as the only option for our youth resulted in a reaction where those highly praised scientific fields suffered the issue of an overflow in the number of students. And as we all know, almost every academic establishment we have here isn't built to handle such capacity. So where is the job or employment we will are offered? It's on the edge. And the payment that comes with it will be getting less and less. Therefore, we won't care about the social status anymore. So why is our society so persistent on such norms? And how can we change that? Before I go on, and tell you how to effectively choose our paths in life, I would like to share a little story that happened to me in the recent past. A cool friend of mine and I were having a casual conversation about our lives and studies. He shared with me his love for electricity and how he always wanted to pursue a career in electrical engineering. 
to make a long story short, unfortunately, he suffered the disapproval of his father because, again, his father thought that his son should pursue any career in the medical field considering there is a job, payment, social status. My protagonist here opted to pursue his dream and became an electrical engineer, a successful one, by the way. But there was a consequence. The relationship between those two, the father and the son, is now gone. This isn't something the son wanted. It is the father's will to disown his child. Many of you with us today would relate to this story. Maybe it's not a parent in your case. Maybe it's a teacher. Maybe it's your friend. Maybe it's your relatives. Let's come to my case and see. For me, it was the whole society. I struggled with this one word, identity. Considering every teacher I had used to call me Dr. Mustafa Auni. What? I was never interested in medicine. In fact, to myself, I was always the artist or the designer or the architect, Tufi, which is my nickname if you didn't know. People uphold a societal mantra, smart kids should become doctors. And this smart kid standing right in front of you fell into that mantra. The patron had won over me, and I enrolled in medical school. My mentality at the time needed reassurance, because the entirety of the community surrounding me told me that I belonged there. So how can I not belong? To be quite frank with you, I felt like I belonged. But why? Because of the surrounding community telling me so. So, living the experience for a year asserted me otherwise. Needing reassurance backfires with a severe consequence. Losing your identity, you will struggle to find the true meaning of this word. Everything becomes absurd, and you will begin to lose faith in the entirety of life. But I have a question for you today. Do you think it's only you, or me, or the younger generation in general? No. It is your father who once rejected your ideas. It is your relatives who once underestimated you for being different. It is your teacher who once controlled your decisions. You see the pattern that I keep mentioning and how it's consuming all of its participants? I want you and everyone to know that despite having many consequences in this area, I know, believe me, you can live a life that only you get to design. For our students and youth, the first step you must do is research. Research every area or field of interest you might have and become aware of its benefits, advantages, disadvantages, career paths, universities, study plans, all of it. Why? To that I tell you, any younger student having an interest might not see the integrated, complete vision of that field or area. So by having the knowledge, you will express yourself before battling with the society ignorantly. You will have a robust response every time there is an argument about what you should do or become or there is a commanding comment about what you should pursue in life. Because people here talk. I'm not telling you to justify your actions or decisions to the society. I'm not. I'm telling you to have the confidence in your statements and decisions. Because truly, knowledge is your best friend. And nowadays, we live in a world where every piece of information is one click away on the internet. Let us walk through another method and take advantage of the French philosopher Michel Foucault's philosophy, reverse discourse, which is defined as one that employs the terminology of a pre-existing discourse, but aims to develop an opposed semantic interpretation. Phew, that was some hard, intense English words. But in a normal man's words, it is basically using society's strategic approaches against it, the approaches that are limiting to us. Let me do a little skit or scenario for you to understand this better. You are a younger student, and let's say you are interested in drawing. You want to become an artist. You walk up to your parents, and you go, hey, mom, dad, I found this drawing course online. Can you enroll me with it? To them, it might seem like, my kid has a hobby. Yay, he'll become an artist. Just as a small hobby, but to you, it's the first step of that life you're designing in your mind, your future life. I want you to build your skill set early so you have the strength and power when it's time to pursue university. This philosophy doesn't stop here. It applies to our bigger argument, the pattern that we all fear to change. 
but how? Let's call it the manipulation procedure, manipulating our society into changing its path where it follows individuality more. It gets more recognized beside our regular group-based dependent system that we have. For this, we need to rely heavily on the younger generation because, as I like to call them, they are fresh minds, eager to comprehend new concepts. So we need to educate and enlighten them about the fine line between two things. Having surrounding opinions and views, listening to them and making your own decision, and being utterly influenced by those surrounding opinions where your decision no longer matters. That way, hopefully, you might somewhat turn the tables and captivate the older pattern towards the new one. Sharing this topic with you today, I wanted every one of you to believe in themselves and start to think of how to resist outdated and inaccurate societal narratives about what one could become or do in the future. It is your decision and it is your choice. And always remember that societies and we as people, we need all specialities to live. We can't progress, develop, or flourish relying on doctors or engineers alone. We really can't. Also, if we are in this together, we need to support one another. We ought to change it together, albeit slowly and gradually. For this, I would like to ask you for a favor after we head out today. I want you to contact, call, text, however you'd like, a younger student in your life, and ask them this simple question. What do you want to become in the future? Very simple. If they have dreams, but think pursuing them is hard, try and take their hands. If they have a vision, but think bringing it to life is impossible, try and guide them. Let me use the metaphor of the impact of planting a tree on our environment to help you understand the concept of contacting that younger student a little better. You see how many environmental activists or scientists tell us frequently, plant one tree, just one tree. They know the simple and delicate form of labor makes a difference in our environment, climate change, and global warming that's happening. So I want you to think of that student as our atmosphere. You will be planting this tree when offering your support. Tell them my story. Share with them your stories. Tell them they can resist, because they only need the will to take the first step. You see, we need small, simple, gradual, and a bit calculated steps to reach a remarkable outcome. Because in the end, you are the master of your own life. Thank you. <laughs>